we're gonna make some cream of mushroom soup. And we're gonna do this by using the poultry stock that's been uh, in the refrigerator for about 24 hours since we made it. I have some mushrooms that I'm gonna use to make this. Uh, they're starting to, as I like to say, get a little long in the tooth. So we're gonna figure out how to deal with those in just a moment. We're gonna thicken this partic particular soup with a bit of flour. So like we did um, in previous videos, we're gonna um, thicken with flour, with a bit of cooked flour. We're gonna have some butter, although you could use olive oil and onion. I have some thyme in here that I stripped off the thyme stems from my porch. I like to use um, golden sherry in the pan just a few tablespoons or so. It adds a nice dimension of flavor. However, if you don't drink alcohol, you're against using it, or you're too young to buy it, you don't have to use it. But we will in this particular video. So let's get started. The first step in making this soup is to trim away the sort of ugly spots of my mushrooms. And usually you can use a mushroom brush if you want. They do grow in a sterile medium that's kind of like dirt, which is that stuff that's sort of on the skins. Um, because I'm gonna end up cooking them and cook away a lot of the moisture of the mushrooms first, I'm gonna actually put them in a colander and rinse them in the sink. And if you have issue with that, you can leave a comment, but I'm gonna make this really easy on myself tonight. So I'm gonna cook the mushrooms I'm gonna put a little salt in there. They're gonna steam up. A lot of the water is gonna cook away, leaving just mushroom essence. Along with that, I'm gonna have some onion in there cooking along. Um, and then we're gonna sprinkle some flour on, cook that flour so it's not raw tasting, as we've done in other things. Add some of our stock. And finally, add a little bit of half and half that I have in the fridge to make that kind of creamy. And at some point, I'm gonna throw in the thyme. All of us buy groceries with the ambition that we're gonna use every single thing in time and everything is going to look perfect, just like in the magazines. But the reality is life doesn't work that way. It didn't work that way in the depression when people did not have refrigerators and it's not working that way now when we have multiple jobs, communications that we're trying to do and lives that we're trying to manage. So you can see here, it's pretty gnarly. There's a little bit of um, decomposition going on like all living things eventually go through but the stem is where it's starting the cap is fine so I'm going to keep that cap and whereas sometimes I would use the the stems for a stock because they're starting to break down like that it's worm food and I'm just checking to make sure that kind of stuff isn't going on in the cap the cap seems to be relatively stable this one's fine and so I'm just going to go through check my mushrooms, take out the gnarly bits, and then chop them up. So I'm gonna start by chopping up the mushrooms that I rinsed under water and chopping up my onion. I'm not gonna to care too much about being um, super fine in the chop on the onion because I'm eventually gonna use an immersion blender, which is this instrument right here. It's a great kitchen gadget. Did they have an immersion blender in the Great Depression? No, they did not, but do we now? Yes, we do, so let's use one. Now we're gonna cook the mushrooms and onions in our pan. We're not gonna make a huge volume of soup. We just had that one container of mushrooms and one onion. So I'm gonna cook it in this pan that I have. I have olive oil in a you know, refillable container that I like to use. You could use butter at this stage or any kind of fat that you like. I'm just gonna drizzle some in the bottom so that things don't stick. And as that slowly heats up, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna kind of orient it like this so they don't stick on the bottom. And then I'm gonna throw my mushrooms and onions in. Just like that. And because I want the mushrooms to give up some of that liquid, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-salt the soup a little bit now, which will help those cook faster. And 
onions have been cooking for a little bit now, and you can see that they're not really throwing out as much liquid as they were before. So I think this is probably just a good time to add the sherry or any sort of white wine that you might wanna add. You could probably add red wine if you wanted. Um, again, it just gives the flavor some dimension, dimensionality without, um, without tasting boozy because we're gonna cook it off. So I'm just gonna throw in a little splash. We don't have to have a lot in there to get the flavor. And as it cooks, you'll see the steam coming up and that'll burn off the alcohol portion of that liquid and leave just the flavor of the sherry, which is a really nice pairing with mushrooms. It's kind of a classic pairing and we're getting fancy. We're a little fancy, but again, this was a $6.99 bottle of Taylor Golden Sherry. Um, I probably have had this for three to four years. <laughs> So it's, you know, it's not a young sherry, let's say, and it wasn't that expensive. So in this time, I'm going to add a little bit of butter because I like the flavor of butter. You don't have to add it at this point, um, but I'm going to cook my flour. And so I want to make sure there's enough fat in the pan. Um, and I'm just going to guess, basically, I'm using the flour to thicken the soup to thicken the broth of the soup. I don't have a ton of mushrooms in there. And so I do wanna cook my flour and I'm just gonna sprinkle it in as that butter melts. Maybe I'll put a little bit more in. Remember, if it gets too thick, you just add more liquid. It's not, it doesn't have to feel like rocket science. It can feel like I'm gonna experiment. When I make a mistake, I'm gonna remember and just give myself the chance to do it, okay? So, I can smell right now the mushrooms. I can smell the sherry cooking. I'm starting to smell a little bit of the flour, but I'm not gonna move it a ton at this stage. Mushrooms, if you want them to brown, which some people like, say with a steak, if you're just cooking plain mushrooms, um, you don't wanna move them a ton, okay? So you wanna let them sort of sit in place. It caramelizes whatever's sitting on that heat and adds depth of flavor, so. As you can see, there's not a lot of liquid left. So I am gonna move these now a little bit. Try to just cook off that raw flavor from the flour. Maybe build up some of the caramelized flavor. And I'm gonna get ready to put in my stock, which I'm gonna do in just a moment. And don't worry that it's all stuck on the bottom. It's not burning, nothing scary. It's starting to get a little dark around the edges. I feel okay with that. I might be wrong. We'll see. So, pretty good right now. This is that nice stock that we made from the leftover turkey and the leftover chicken. Again, I'm pouring off to the side, not directly over because as steam comes up, it can burn you really badly. Steam and sugar are two of the Worst burns you can get in the kitchen, I think. They can really hurt. So right now, just to start with, I'm gonna add three cups. And what we're looking for as we're doing that, and I'm gonna kind of rub the bottom along, kind of incorporate that flour and break up that kind of crust that builds up on the bottom. What we're looking for is this to come to a simmer, at which point the flour, the action of the flour, that thickening action is gonna take effect and let us know how thick this soup is at that point. At this point, I'm also gonna add just a touch more salt for good measure. I think I'm also gonna add the thyme since I forgot to do that earlier. This is dried thyme that I grew outside and I'm just gonna kind of crush it up as I throw it in just so it's in smaller pieces. You don't have to do that doesn't really matter, but that's what I'm gonna choose to do. And I like time, so I'm gonna use a little bit more. So we'll just wait for this to come up to a little bit of a simmer. Right now, if you look in the pan, you'll see some action happening. I was pointing earlier to a little bit of movement in the middle of the pan. This is starting to come up to a simmer. A simmer is not a boil, okay? A boil is something that you can't stir away. So right now, if I were to stir this, magic, no bubbles. 
okay? But you can see that that liquid is starting to thicken up. It's getting kind of unctuous. So it's gonna continue to thicken as it cooks, but I just wanted to show you what the beginning of a simmer looks like. This is just the beginning of the simmer. So now what you see is a pretty nice simmer starting. Again, you can't stir away a boil. So if you look at that, I can stir that away still. That is a simmer, technically. And at this point, I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'm gonna use that immersion blender to puree the soup as it is, because I'm not gonna leave it chunky in my version, although you could. So I've been using the immersion blender in this soup to, it's basically a hand blender. You know, it's just a nice tool to have in the kitchen. Um, but because there's not much soup in here, and because the soup is hot, you can see it's steaming, I don't wanna burn myself. So I'm gonna start slow, um, just giving it a couple quick bursts. I'm also gonna tilt my immersion blender, so instead of having it flush with the bottom, I'm gonna tilt, tilt it a little bit, which causes um, sort of a suction, and it brings up all the chunks underneath it and makes it puree a little bit more efficiently. And you can see I'm getting a little splat, so I'm gonna change the angle. It also has a speed setting, so now I'm gonna go up to a little higher speed. And again, as you're starting, if you're using immersion blender for the first time, start slow um, and start with those quick bursts because you really don't wanna have a burn from a splatter. You can get a burn from a tiny little splatter. It's not great. Just skip it for yourself. I'm gonna add a little more stock. Because we didn't have many mushrooms, it is sort of a saver to thicken with flour. It's a bit of a cheat, not a bad cheat, but it's an economical cheat. And that's what we're gonna do here. So it's got still some nice body to it. It's kind of thick, you can see. This would be really good, I think, with a grilled cheese sandwich, but that depends on what you like to eat. Um, but especially as we get into winter time and it's dark and it's cold in the Midwest, I think soup is a really nice thing to make. And this is a great use of the stock that you made from a roast chicken if you decided to make that. Um, but just sort of a nice thing to make. So I'm gonna put this back up in temperature and let that cook a little bit longer on a simmer, just a little bit longer. And then towards the end of cooking, I'm gonna add a little splash of cream. You can see it already looks creamy, even though we did not add any cream yet. Okay, so we're back at a simmer. We've added more stock. Uh, one thing you wanna think about when you're making something like this, because we used a homemade stock, there's no salt in it. You can make this, of course, with a bouillon cube. You can make it with a boxed stock but both the bouillon and the box have a lot of sodium already included. So because I have no sodium in the stock that I used, I'm gonna anticipate that even though I did a bunch of grinding with my um, salt grinder, that this is not gonna be salty enough. It's not gonna taste, it's gonna taste kind of flat is how it tastes. That's the best way I can describe it. It tastes a little flat when it's undersalted. You don't wanna oversalt, but you don't wanna undersalt either. It's a fine balance. It tastes good, but it has a bit of a flat flatness to it. So I'm gonna add a pretty significant pinch of salt, maybe a little bit more. I tend to salt on the light side. If whomever is cooking the food is a smoker, smoking does decrease the ability to taste salt. So you'll frequently feel or perceive too much salt in food if you are not a smoker and a smoker is preparing your food. Because just the two of us are gonna be eating the soup and it is cooking, I'm gonna use my same spoon. I'm gonna break all the rules of sanitary cooking and taste again. And drip on the floor. It's still not there. 
Again, nothing magic is gonna happen between you shutting off the stove and serving the soup. So you wanna make sure before you do that, that it's tasting the way you want it to taste. In hindsight, I probably would have put in more sherry, but it does taste really good right now, so I'm not too concerned. Again, one more swirl through, just adding my, my bacteria into the soup. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it off. It's not a great, since I'm adding a bit of cream, it's not a great idea to boil your cream. Sometimes you'll get curdling in it. I'm gonna add just a little bit more because the cream I'm adding, again, isn't salted. Um, but since the soup is so hot, so that was probably a quarter cup of cream. You don't necessarily need to use a lot of cream to convey a creaminess, okay? So you could use heavy cream there, certainly, if you um, really like a creamy, creamy soup, you can use heavy cream, you can use just a splash of cream, or you can use no cream. It was actually pretty creamy tasting. If you were to have used all olive oil and then maybe even a nut milk of some kind, not almond, not sweet, um, this would be a vegan soup. So if you're interested in making something that's vegan, you could do this with a vegetable stock, with olive oil, and with some sort of nut milk. But in this case, um, we've made a meat-based stock with the poultry stock. And so one last time. I think it's ready. It's good. Mm -hmm.